stirs that. Without you, we can do nothing. So we're very reliant upon you, Lord, and we do look for your guidance and understanding. May we just take in what we are taught, knowing that it's God-inspired, and we want to have the witness of Jesus Christ in our life to be an attraction to other people that may not know about Jesus Christ. Lord, we just ask a blessing upon those people that join with us on the internet, wherever they are. Bless them intimately, we ask. Amen and amen. Shall we stand and sing number 247, which is sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven. Amen. We should uh, just expect the Lord coming and shout the victory before he even gets here. Um, we're going to have number 203, and uh, not far off, we'll see if there's any testimonies, if anyone would like to share with us. Number 203, which is uh, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Jesus is the sweetest name I know And he's just the same As his lovely name That's the reason why Yeah. 
that's true I know you believe it but uh, you just be in the public arena and hear someone say Jesus my ears pop up and I start realizing and which flavor that's going to be someone that loves the Lord or someone that's abusing the Lord it kind of tells straight up what it is let's sing number 209 it's the life behind the name that makes the demons tremble It's the life behind the name that makes the demon tremble. It's the life behind the name that makes the proud heart humble. It was God who devised the plan and in all things like a man he would live so he could give to us the life behind the name. It's the life behind the name that makes the demon tremble. It's the life behind the name that makes the proud heart humble. It was God who devised the plan. All things like a man that he would give, to give behind the name. Okay, let's sing 176. Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. Then if anyone has a testimony, we'd like to hear from you. Jesus. Sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, much fairer than the lily that grows by the way. You are precious more precious than gold Jesus sweet Jesus what a wonder you are you are brighter than the morning star you are fairer much fairer than the lily that grows by the way you are precious more precious than gold you may be seated and do have anyone with a testimony they'd like to share at this time Well, while you're thinking about it, I was uh, very uh, appreciative of the Lord. As some of you know, I, I was, Barbara and I went to Auckland two days ago, three days ago, whenever it was, just recently in a tandem trailer with um, 
a nearly 400 kilogram big bench on the top uh, on this tandem trailer with a special A-frame to hold it. And uh, when we got back to round about Tauranga and um, I just felt to go and tie the belt down a bit tighter to make sure that it was holding and it was starting to slip and I realised that it needs to be adjusted. But while I was there, I th thought I'll just check the tyres. I don't normally do that, but being an next trucky, <laughs> I did. I gave them three of them a kick and the fourth one went <laughs> It had a puncture in it. So um, we had to go along to uh, a, a place where we could pump the tyres up. It was getting late in the day. And um, and then I found that it had a, a piece of wire right in the tyre and it was letting the air down. But it was slow going down over the distance that I'd done. And I started to realise that, oh, well, that's, um, it may hold up and I, I can't get this fixed tonight because it was closed, uh, tyre people were closed. So um, I pumped it up again, tight put in about 50 PSI, <laughs> and uh, I got as far as um, a potiki nicely, and I was able to get the tyre fixed uh, completely, had to put a plug in it. But th I could feel the wire sticking out of the tyre quite easily, and I thought, I'm sure glad, Lord, that you'd shown me that, because to go all the way to Gisborne like it, I could have lost the tyre completely. So um, I was very grateful for the Lord for showing me that, just to be aware of it. So, uh, do we have any other testimonies? Just one at a time, we'll be fine. <laughs> Who loves the Lord Amen. with a raised hand? Boy, a lot of testimonies right there. Well, that's very good. However, okay, well, we don't have any right now. So, let us just have another couple of songs and then um, Brother Howard will come. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Shall we stand as we sing it? Thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for setting me free. I once was lost, now I'm found, now my soul is heavenly bound. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for setting me free. I once was lost, now I'm found, now my soul is heavenly bound. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Once was lost, now I'm found. Now my soul is heavenly bound. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. It's a good one, chorus that to sing when you're driving along. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. But what really makes an uplift is that that's the truth. I'm singing the truth. Thank you, thank you, Lord. It's not just words, it's a fact. Let's sing one more, then Brother Howard will come. Let the Lord have his way, number 99. And that's what we want for him to do. Let the Lord have his way in your heart every day. There's no rest. 
Until the Lord has His way, place your life in His hands. Rest secure in His plan. Let the Lord, let the Lord have His way. Let the Lord. Just as a reminder that uh, this time next week we won't be having this meeting because Howard away and quite a few others will be away. So it'll just be the morning service and luncheon and then uh, we go home. Praise the Lord. Can you just stand up again, please? We're just going to turn our Bibles and go straight to the Word of God. It's found in Matthew chapter 7. Got a new operator up there, Brother Tim. He's operating the scriptures and the songs, having a practice for next week. I think he'll be all right. And taking the video at the same time. It's going to be nice to have his father here next week. It'll be a main service, the main service. Songs to and the preacher. Matthew 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. <clears throat> because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. A few there be that find it. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that, is, that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Praise the Lord. Shall we just pray? Lord, just quicken your word to us now, we ask in the wonderful name of Jesus. May we learn a lesson from this today. May you embed it upon our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. I want to speak about fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. We only preach and believe what God has said. God is only obligated to back up <clears throat> his own word here, the Bible. Jesus has made this statement, which cannot be altered or explained away. He said, by the fruit you shall know them. That is a simple test that any person, any child can use. So what is fruit? Naturally speaking, fruit is the uh, manifestation of a life within. Isn't it simple how Jesus used these things for us to understand? 
You cannot, <clears throat> you cannot change that fact. If a tree has a sign in the front of it, apple tree, and you observe on that tree oranges, do you question the tree or the sign? Now this is really serious. You come to an apple tree, it says apple tree, and it's got oranges on it. Do you question the sign or do you question the tree? Sign. sign. Thank you. This never enters your head that the tree has made a mistake. Now, we're talking about people now. They say, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. And then you see another fruit in their life that's not a Christian. Do you question the sign or the person? The person. Just a simple test Jesus gave us. Because a tree is only putting forth fruit from the life within. Amen. It just bears, if it's going to be apples in there, it's just going to come out apples. Not feed jars. Or oranges, it'll come out what's in there. In the beginning God said, Everything bring forth after its kind. You can read that in Genesis 1.24. God, God's word takes up on this natural law that we just spoke about. Every tree bringing forth after its kind. Not just a tree, every animal life. You know, monkeys don't produce dogs. They produce monkeys because the life of a monkey is in there. To explain a spiritual truth, all of nature is bound to that law. It's a law of God. It has to be fulfilled. You don't have to argue with anybody. The fruit will tell you what it is. It's really good. It takes you out of the equation. You don't have to get involved. Some say, I'm a real dedicated Christian, and they act like the world. Something wrong. We don't question the sign. We question the life that's in there. Or what they say is in there. You've heard in the Bible the term, the fruit of your loins. What's in you comes out of you. Your children are a manifestation of your life. Come from your loins. Just like the orange, orange species brings forth exactly the same characteristics that's in it. So human life manifests in their children. We all see our likenesses. Sometimes we don't like it. But we see the likenesses of our family. I see Diane and Pauline, Mari and Pauline and, and the rest of them. I just, all the, I just see them all the same. That's why I call them the wrong names. Sometimes I call her Pauline or Sister Diane. Who's ever done that? Yeah. There we are. That's because... It's in the genes. The life's in there. And they don't have to do anything. Even your sister, Mari, not Mari, um, Annette, she's down at the chiropractor's and she's in the office there. And I, I say, Annette? She said, yeah. I said, all I can see is Diane. I said, you don't look like Diane, but the characteristics, the expressions come out because the life is in there. Everyone says, Brother Lee looks like my dad. He is. Who believes that's amen? Those that have seen him know it's true. So it's what God's word says. That's in the natural life we're speaking of, of course. And uh, in the spiritual fruit, 
Spiritual fruit is under exactly the same law of God. Jesus confirmed that as in our first reading, the fruit is really a visible manifestation of the life within, whether good or whether bad, it comes forth. It's just the same. No matter how many signs we erect, telling members, others, what we are. You know, Solomon made a statement, don't think I've got it down here, but a gift in a man makes way for the man. Not the man, the gift does. It'll take him before kings, it says. The gift, because it's in there. You don't say, well, I'm a wonderful song leader. And you can't sing at all. You know, there's there's something wrong with the sign. If the gift's in you, it manifests. Is that right, Brother Paul? It will. So we see these things are very important. People naturally and correctly... So believe the fruit they see. People always believe the fruit they say, see. Uh, you, a person might say, oh, I'm not much good. I'm hopeless. You've heard people say that? I say that quite often. <laughs> but if there's something good in you, they'll look at that first than what you say. The fruit that you bear in your life is what warms them, not all the claims you make, good or bad. So we're speaking about fruitfulness. And, you know, uh, our signs come in various forms. Some can be very convincing. You can appear very spiritual on the outside. Carry a Bible just right. Come along. Amen. Oh, it looks so good. Look like a priest or whatever. But Jesus gave us a very good clue to look for. And that is inconsistency of the fruit. You don't find apples on your tree one day and go up the next day and find oranges on that same tree. I've never has anyone done that? I just want to make sure that I've got it right. I've only seen apples one day and apples the next. I don't come in there and see apples one day and lemons the next day. Why? Nature tells you and within you that the life has to be in the fruit, in the tree. And somebody looks really sweet and the next day they're really sour. You know there's something wrong. There's a bit of a hiccup in the system somewhere. The Bible says, puts it like this, in James 3.10, Out of the same mouth proceeded blessings, out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Here it is. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Wouldn't it be awful you go in beautiful spring water one day, and the next day it's all bitter out of the same spring? Can a fig tree, Jesus say, said, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs, so can, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. That was from James, not from Jesus, but it's from the Holy Ghost. Now these are times in our life where we, are, we may be inconsistent. There may be times of inconsistency. Now that's the reason is there's two lives. You have your fallen nature hiding in there somewhere. It always raises its ugly head. But you also have the Holy Spirit in there. And that's what we need. That's why I've been emphasising we need to be filled with the Spirit. 
because we're in the old flesh, it raises the head from now and then. But if the life of God is in you, repentance quickly follows. You know, you can blow up in front of somebody and you think, get away with it. If you're a child of God, you'd be down on your knees pretty smartly. Say, so, Lord, forgive me for that t- vile attitude. Cast that thing out of me, Lord. I want to be identified with your death at Calvary. And it was put to death. That nature has been put to death. If we see people real sweet to people and bitter to others, well... As James 3 says. Let's read this, James 3 verse 8, Brother Tim. But the tongue can no man tame. Does anyone have trouble with your tongue? Yes. You do too? Yes, Shelley, you wouldn't do that, would you? You have trouble with your tongue. I have trouble with my tongue. Sometimes you feel like cutting it out. You ever had that experience? Yeah. What a foolish thing to say. Why did I do that? Why? Let's read on. The tongue can no man tame. It's like an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Your tongue can slay a person like you won't believe. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men. Oh, inconsistency which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeding blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. So if it's happening, and it can happen, we need to really seek the face of God and say, Lord, this thing's going to be cut out of me, and you're the only one that can do it. But Lord, I've had enough. I'm sick of being a two-timer. We know that they are tied on fruits, humanly manufactured. When we try to, some people, they have a lot of lovely fruit on Sunday and shocking fruit during the week. Spiritual fruit is mentioned many times throughout the Bible. God definitely is expecting fruit. This is sometime we must, this is something we must all remember. It is mentioned in many places throughout the Bible. And let's turn to Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. That's his word here. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. We should be thinking upon the things of God, not thinking upon politics and everything, and I'm as guilty as anybody. And we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So, brother and sister, there it is, really clear. We turn, I just want to read you this from the, the Amplified Bible. This is from, uh, no, no, I've jumped, jumped the gun there, sorry. John the Baptist, I want to think about him for a moment. They are also bringing forth fruit. John the Baptist also re- reinforces this wonderful truth. Watch this carefully, Luke 3, verse 7. And then, he's, and then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers. <laughs> John was wonderful. Imagine hearing a preacher say that when you come to hear the word. O oh, you generation of vipers. You would have got up and so I'm getting out of here. This guy's going to tear me to pieces but is anointed of the Holy Ghost. Who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Now listen to the statement of verse 8. Bring forth therefore fruits. Fruits, we're talking about fruit bearing, fruitfulness. Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance. And begin not to say within thyselves, within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. We have Abraham to our father. 
For I say unto you that God is able to these stones to raise children unto Abraham. That is quite a statement, isn't it? Praise be to God. And now also the axe is laid to the root, unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth fruit, good fruit, is hewn down and cast into the fire. There's a consequence when the fruit's not on the tree. Remember that. I just want to read this um, to you uh, from the Amplified Bible. That one we just read. This is what it says. Bear fruits that are deserving and consistent with your repentance. This matches up. Your repentance looks really good. A lot of tears. But what's the fruit looking like? That is, conduct worthy of the heart change a heart abhorring sin. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that God is able to, from these stones to raise up descendants of Abraham. For Abraham, sorry. Now note the serious end result of not having fruit. Verse 9, we read it. Have it chopped down. Some people will say, well, I know I am saved and that's the main thing. You've heard people say that? But that is just the start. The Lord is offering more than just being saved. He wants to use your whole life for his glory and for the saving of others. And remember what Jesus said in John 15. Let's read it, verse 1. I am the vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me, in Christ, that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, life of Christ coming from you, he purgeth it, prunes it, that it may bring forth more fruit. God wants more fruit out of your life, not just a little bit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, it's no way. Without me you can do nothing, he said. Except it abide in the vine. No more can ye. Except you abide in me. Praise be to God. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. And it says, as we just read on, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same person bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. A man gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Jesus is, is expecting fruit from you and me. We can't just say, I go to church. I gave my heart to the Lord. That's very nice. Where's the fruit? I'm a Christian. But there's things coming out on the vine that are not looking good. We question the sign. We question the testimony. When people say, I, I love the Lord. I go to church. And then they do shady deals. People watch you and think, what's wrong with this tree? It says, I'm a Christian. And there's something else coming out of the life. He wants us to have fruit from him that others can partake of and be saved. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2, we read this. Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. You're an open book. Everybody's reading you. Even at work, Brother Keith. You know that. 
They're looking at you. They're looking at me. You say, what well, we will. They're reading you. They've got, they got a free copy being displayed every day. And that's what they read. They, you know, you've heard the saying, don't preach him a sermon. Live me one. Because the living one is the thing that people read. Not your words, your life. So may God help us in this area. Red of all men. Fruit is to be eaten, to be partaken of, not just to be looked at. We may honestly believe we see some fruit in our lives, but Jesus wants more fruit. Sorry. More fruit equals more souls. That's so important. More fruit equals more souls. If you say you're a Christian, then you're acting like the world and doing worldly things. Like, oh, brother. Oh, I could give a testimony, but I can't because it wouldn't be right. Because I'll just say it very briefly. I knew this person, and he knew I was telling him about the Lord. And he said, oh, so-and-so. Are they a Christian? I said, yeah. And this person, man of the world, said, oh, I wouldn't have thought so. Never said anything to me about it. See, there's no fruit. He should know. You don't have to tell people you're a Christian. They just know. I'll say this testimony involved myself, but I'm not saying for my glory. I used to work at the post office. I used to be a postie. I used to post the, me- the letters, the message. And I'm still posting the message. <laughs> but it's a different message. But I was, and all the, we used to go into the mail room and they used to call me Howie. And I used to come around with the, the raffles on the trolley. How many do you want for this person? Went to the next postie. How many do you want this one? And they came up to me. Oh, hi, Howie. They all said, Howie won't have one. I said, how do you know that? We know you don't have it, Howie. You're a Christian. Isn't that wonderful? And I never said one word about raffles or... They just knew. I just didn't want to get involved in that. There's got to be fruit on the tree. Known and read of all men. So we may have to be pruned and chastened. The Lord gets out those secateurs and he chops off those things he doesn't like. I don't like that. I don't want that to be in your life. It's not bringing a good testimony. So there's things in our, in our lives that may not be bearing the fruit of Christ. Might be, might be confusing the issue. The Lord wants it to be chopped off. Not also we have to be in him to bring forth the life of Christ. The only way the life of Christ is going to come out of your branches is for you to be in the vine. And that vine is Christ and you're plugged into, into, into the vine, then the fruit and life of Christ will be on the branches. If it's not, get on your knees and say, Lord, there's something wrong. I want to know why the fruit's not there. God needs his branches to bear fruit. The Lord is a very good husbandman. He's expecting a good crop in this last hour. The world are longing for to partake of the fruit of this nation. Of this, I mean, in this nation. Partaking of the fruit. Because the world's offering nothing to them but confusion. So may God help us. The story of the talents bears out that well. He's all given us each a talent of eternal life. He's coming back to collect his talent and is expecting more talents. Don't waste your talent on nonsense. Yes, he's expecting more souls. And as a result of your experience with him, God has sown in many hearts. Many have been truly called of God. The Bible says so many are called. There's no doubt about that, but so few go all the way, as we said this morning. 
They don't go all the way. They start off going to the promised land. Then they peter out. I'll go back. I'm going back. We sing that song, No Turning Back. No Turning Back. We should sing that later, June. As a result of your experience with him. We want to bear fruit for others to be saved. <clears throat> he, therefore, the parable of the soul. Read this. <coughs> Matthew 13. Matthew 13, verse 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which is sown in the heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and annoy immediately with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself. Don't be like this, brothers. Pray to God you'll get that stuff out of you. But endureth for a while when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word. By and by he's offended. People become offended. Something wrong. The roots didn't go down properly. Well, they didn't get into Christ. They got into church, but they didn't get into Christ. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receives seed into good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. I've always wanted to know what that means. Some a hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. God has a reason for that. Some have more than others, I guess, but the good thing is at least you've got fruit. I'm not saying that's interpretation. I, I couldn't say that. But they all received the word sown. But they allowed other things to hinder the life. You ever seen, we've got gardens and trees growing up and get that, what's the name of that horrible vine? Starts winding around the trees. Huh? Yes. It's, it's, it's a, a climber. Uh -huh. Jasmine is another one, yes. And it, it gets around the, the tree and looks very, it doesn't look very influential. Just leave it a while. Starts tightening up. Gets fatter and fatter. If left, it'll choke the tree. You allow those things to get on you and start climbing around you, eventually it'll choke the life and you become unfruitful. May the Lord help us all. Sometimes we have to take drastic measures. We take to it with a sword or knife or secretaries. We have to chop that thing right down, rip it out of the ground. If you want the fruit of God to be in your life, you're going to have to get drastic about it. Otherwise it'll destroy you if left unchecked. I know what I'm talking about. I'm having to do it all the time. So may the Lord help us all. The time is running out. It's harvest time for this generation. The Lord of the harvest is coming to collect his fruit into the garner. May the Lord do a quick work in us all. Lord, whatever it takes to be more like you, that's what I'm willing to be. I don't care how much it chops at me. I want it out. Who wants that? You want God to chop out that nonsense. That'll take it to hell if it's left long enough. So whatever it takes to be pruned, 
Just do it, Lord. I'm praying for more fruit from my life. You really pray that God will be pleased with the fruit in all of our lives. And as a result, we will have the privilege to see more fruit. More souls quickly brought into the kingdom. You know, brother, sister, I'm not satisfied with the number of people come here. Not because the crowd, because, oh, we've had a lot of people, but where are they now? Where are they now? There's lots of reasons where they are. God knows all about that. Not judging anybody, God knows. Brothers and sisters, I never miss a meeting. I can say that before God. I've never missed a meeting, Brother Keith, unless I'm sick or out of town. Now that's not being boastful. That's just I just I just I just I just, can't, I just want to be there. Above everything, I want to be in service in the house of God. So may God help us all. That fruit will be seen in us. That he will prune us and he will take out of us those things that are displeasing to him. Who desires that? If you desire that, just stand your feet just now. Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord, as we come to you that you will take out of us, Lord, the things that are not bearing good fruit. You will prune it, Lord. You said you'll prune it and bring forth more. I pray, Lord Jesus, cut those things out of us, Lord, that are not pleasing to you. We pray, Lord, that we'll not turn back like those people did in the, in the sermon this morning. They want to go back to their idols. They want to go back to the world. They want to go back to entertainment. Oh, God, cut that stuff out of us. Lord, do a work in each one of us, I pray, Lord. I commit this word to you and pray that you'll bless it here and those that are listening in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll not turn back. I'll not turn back. I've decided to follow Jesus. It's like Ruth. She decided to go to the promised land. And she wasn't going to be detoured. Nobody was going to turn her off. She made it clear. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Oh, no, no, no. Turning back. Thou wilt behind me, cross before me, thou wilt behind me, thou cross before me, thou wilt behind me, turning back, oh no, no. People overseas, you sing this from your heart. Oh, now go with me. Go with me. Follow. like to come up here, brother, and just close for us. Though not go with me, still will I follow. Though not go with me, still I will follow. The journey Let us pray. Father, there is no turning back. Remember Lot's wife. Lord, she came out physically, 
but her heart was still fitted back to her past. And Lord, there's no way that we can follow you. There's no way that we can bear the so-called fruit of righteousness and holiness that you want us to bear. Lord, if we hang on to the past, if we keep looking backwards, but rather, Lord, you call us to keep our eyes on you because you are the author and you are the finisher of our faith. So, Lord, we come and we ask that, indeed, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you will guide us and lead us into those situations out there, Father, where you want the fruit of the gospel, the fruit of the love of Christ, the mercy of Christ, the fruit of hope that only comes from you, O God, that you would guide us and lead us to those places, those people, those situations where you want those fruits, O God, to come forth from us as your people. We thank you so much for the anointing that is upon us. We thank you, O God, that your spirit is ever guiding us and leading us into your perfect world plan and purpose for our lives. And Lord, we give you praise, glory, and thanks for that. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you.